Welcome everyone. Thanks for coming by. It's Chris Petrie. We're going to be creating a wonderful flower painting today. We're going to do a really interesting uh, setup here. We're going to have our actual uh, flowers right here uh, set up next to us on the camera. We'll do our light pencil drawing first, then we'll go over the top with a darker pencil line. We call that a contour drawing. If you're new here and you, it's your first time, welcome. We're kind of just covering some of the basics that we do. We do a preliminary sketch first, light pencil line, then we go over with a darker pencil line on top of that to get everything really uh, well set in our rectangle that we have here on our watercolor paper. And then uh, we'll get started after that with our watercolor paints and we have our palette. We use uh, a whole mixture of different colors. We explain how we're going to do all of those mixes, how we create those mixes in our palette and um, get them onto the paper effectively and quickly um, as we go. And um, we're going to have a great time. So uh, let's uh, grab our art gear, our pencils, our paper, our paints, and we'll have a great time creating this wonderful flower uh, and leaf form subject. And uh, we'll get started just in a second. Okay, we just saw the finished painting, so we're going to get started here drawing. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say was I'm trying to actually uh, make a tiny bit of a change here where I notice if we do just a single uh, bit of flowers here, we can kind of just set them on the table and you can draw and paint from this. So I think that'll be helpful because that's probably a lot better than looking uh, at the um, subject matter through a phone screen. Uh, so sometimes even a photograph, if I was to have a printed out copy of a photograph or something on here, it's not as interesting and as realistic as this is because this is three dimensional here. You can see it's got, uh, um, these are, um, a bit of flowers and, uh, some leaf forms and the stem. So this is really good subject matter. It's three dimensional. It's just sitting right on top of the table here on my art table. So let's work with this. Let's see how this goes. I think it's going to work out wonderfully actually. And um, the only thing I think that will change um, from the angle perspective is you're seeing it from my video camera angle, which is basically going straight down like this. So you're seeing an, a, a, per, a perfectly, um, the camera set up straight overhead looking down this way. I'm standing at the table back a little bit, maybe a foot or two. So I'm seeing it on a little bit of an angle. So you would draw this as you see it through this picture, if you can, through the through the um, video. You'll draw and paint it uh, the way you're seeing it on your end. And I'm just going to draw it the way I'm seeing it here, standing a little bit back from it. So I'm seeing a little more of a uh, angled uh, view of it. So I'm sort of seeing it um, on an angle like this, so to speak. Like, you know, not, not on the table. I'm seeing it like this a little bit because the table's on an angle. And then I'm standing back over here. If you can imagine, I'm, you know, back at the back of the table here standing. So when I see this, it's, you know, got a little bit of an angle to it. But I think it should be pretty close to what you're seeing. So it shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. We'll get started. Um, first thing we do, we like to always um, try to set up a... Um, Try to set up a rectangle that you're going to work within. So if, if we can remember to always think of when we're creating a painting as we're working within a defined space, a rectangle. Sometimes it might be a square too. Sometimes you work in a square format. But this is basically a rectangle and it's in a portrait format which is vertical, upright. And so once we get that pencil line in there, then we know, okay, now we got to work within that pencil line, that border we just created. And then um, you can also use a, a mat if you would like. You can set a mat on top of your um, paper and create a, a border. This one happens to be maybe a little small for this paper. We might be able to get a larger mat. Let me see if I can find something. Okay, this one might be, yeah, actually that works out perfect. So this one is an 11 by 14. So an 11 by 14 mat works with this. 
but it's going to be right to the edges of the paper. So, But I don't mind seeing the pencil lines. I, I like the pencil line, that border line, that looks kind of good. Brings some interesting dynamics to the, to the painting. A little bit of more pencil lines in there, I'm happier. But you're the artist, you'll kind of decide what, uh, what kind of things you like to add or delete from your paintings that we're doing here. So you always remember you have the freedom as an artist to kind of adjust your paintings the way you would like. So I know sometimes, you know, you might say, I, I'm not so interested in seeing a lot of pencil lines. I'd rather not see too many. Well, that's fine. You can just kind of go with a lighter pencil line when you're drawing. Or you might say, oh, I really enjoy the pencil line. So that's fine. Then you can draw your pencil lines a little darker and you can leave them right in your painting and not really worry too much about them and just let them be a part of the overall artwork itself. So you have that uh, privilege and um, that freedom as an artist. You, you kind of adjust your art the way you would like to see it. I'm just kind of doing it the way I would kind of enjoy doing my artwork. And, you know, you can adjust from there. That's fine. So uh, the first thing I'll do is a preliminary sketch. And um, I'm trying to think if I should raise this up a little bit. I think that's okay like that. So I'll try to... Get a, fill in the, the rectangle quite a bit here. So let me, so I'll do a light preliminary sketch like this. Now when I do a light preliminary sketch, I like to uh, sort of make sure I'm And I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, perfect with things. I, I try to, again, this is just a preliminary sketch. I just want to make sure that I get everything sort of the way I'm seeing it. Okay, so that kind of looks pretty good. I feel like that light sketch is enough that I can go back in now with a darker pencil line and kind of redraw it in a sense, but do it in a, the contour drawing fashion, which is um, starting in one place, usually more in the center area, and then working from there outward. So. I'm just going to get a few more lines in there. And when I sort of have this, I'll just and uh, since we're right here, I'm just going to go up like this. Like that. And then this is... Like that. All right, so that looks pretty good. I have one more leaf form over here. I'll just try to get this penciled in a little bit.
All right, that looks good. Now, I always mention um, taking breaks. I'm going to take a break right now just for a few seconds. Um, you probably won't even, obviously you really don't notice it when I do take breaks. I'll just, I just usually mention that I do take a break because I've just done the preliminary sketch and that's, you know, a little bit of, um, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, concentration. We're keeping our concentration really good and trying to make sure that we're capturing everything really nicely, um, going slow, checking our lines, looking back and forth. I'm always looking back and forth at the flowers and then back and the leaves and you could kind of see that preliminary sketch was very, very light. So then what we'll do now is I'll take my quick five minute break just to kind of relax for a few minutes and then we'll come back and I'll do my darker contour drawing over the top of the preliminary sketch. Basically when I do my contour drawing I'm going to still be doing the same thing as I did with my preliminary sketch. I'm going to be constantly looking back and forth as I'm drawing that darker pencil line with the contour drawing. Only difference is I already have like a road map here that kind of gives me the basis of my darker pencil line and my contour drawing. I don't have to feel like I'm not sure of where I need to be. This kind of like gives me my almost like a um, it's like yeah it's just like kind of tracing over what I already did except the reason I do the first preliminary sketches is just so I can do a light pencil line and if I have to I can erase a little bit and readjust things um, and and then, then I can go over with the darker pencil line. But I'll be redrawing it again the same as I did here. I'm going to try to look, keep looking back and forth at my subject matter. But this advantage now is I have the light pencil line so I, I can use that and kind of follow that along as I go. Not that I'll be exactly like this light pencil line, but it's going to be close to that. That's kind of like my road map as to where I need to be with my darker pencil lines, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's take a quick break. Um, and this is kind of a fun painting that we can do kind of quickly so we're not going to be here for an hour like it should take us about uh, half an hour 45 minutes and we'll be have this completed and I think it'll be really beautiful we'll um, create all the wonderful colors here the purples and the greens and a little bit of the golds and uh, we, we should have a fun time it's going to be a simple color color scheme just purples and the greens with some golds so some yellow ochre raw umber raw sienna and then our greens we'll use all of our greens olive green Viridian green, maybe a little bit of um, uh, cerulean blue mixed in with some uh, uh, yellow ochre or raw sienna. So we'll, we'll make a really nice uh, uh, interpretation of what we're seeing here with, uh, with our colors. So we'll, I'll be right back in just a second. Okay, we are going to get started again. I'm glad you're here painting along with me, drawing. We're having a great time. Um, we're just going to uh, get right into it here. So I'm going to start more in the center location um, of my uh, flowers and stems and leaf forms here. And I'm just going to go up and start. Carefully going as I
I put a little W there just to remind me that this is the white of the paper here. So we're seeing through the f flower shapes here, the petal shapes, we're seeing through it. And there's some green leaves behind there. All right, that looks pretty good. I think we have it. Always remember, too, when you're doing your pencil drawings, um, you always have a little bit of room to leave some things out. Don't feel like you have to draw every detail. You can do those details with your brushwork and your paint. So it's almost like you get your pencil drawing completed, your contour drawing. And of course, your first step was what we did together is we did that, con uh, that preliminary sketch, just so you kind of get your flowers lightly kind of penciled in so you're kind of situated right in here nicely on the on the rectangle that we have set up with our pencil line around the whole paper. This way when we start uh, things off right, getting everything kind of fit perfectly right in our rectangle like this, then, then we're good to go. Then we can go over with our darker contour drawing, our darker pencil line. Feel free if you don't, maybe let's say if you really don't like to have a darker pencil line on your watercolor pa uh, paintings, that's fine too. You can just uh, leave your preliminary sketch as it is and then start painting on top of that. That's fine as well. That's another way to, um, to do it. And sometimes I will do that myself. Sometimes if I do a preliminary sketch and it comes out really good, I'll just leave it like that and then start right in and start painting. But I do like to do the, um, the contour drawing over the top uh, most times, uh, most often. And then you can always, too, you can take a little bit of an kneaded eraser and just sort of maybe, if you, if you find you want to erase a few little bits of uh, darker pencil lines, just a few here and there, just to lighten it up a little bit. Uh, that might be good. Might work. And um, that's pretty good. I think we're all set and get, let's get ready to paint. Again, I'm going to take another, just a, you know, five minute break. Relax. Um, and, uh, and I'll just, uh, we'll, we'll get, uh, get our brush. Um, I think we'll just use one brush for this painting. I think that's all we can, we can really just use one brush. That should be fine. Uh, maybe I'll use a uh, travel brush. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to pick out a brush while I take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll get right into the painting. Okay, so let's get started now. We'll mix up some colors. We'll, we'll kind of get our color out on the palette here, just to make sure we kind of... We can, we're going to have some purple there, and then some lizard and crimson. I think I have my palette swapped around incorrectly. I usually have it this way. That's usually the way I have it there. That's more like it. And uh, so Lizard and Crimson, Ultramarine Violet. And then uh, we'll have some greens up here. Sap Green. A little bit of uh, Viridian Green over here. I can kind of see my Viridian Green is... I have a little bit of that 
granulation there. Maybe some cerulean blue with some yellow. Raw sienna. So cerulean blue, raw sienna, a little bit, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. Some viridian green too as well. Sap green up here, and then we'll have our purple and alizarin crimson for the flowers, and we can get started here. Feel free to um, start in this. I would start in the center areas usually, and work my way sort of in the. And I can see right away. going to start to just right away I want to start mixing in some of the yellow cadmium uh, yellow lemon and then some of the blue as well and some of the stem areas here I'm keeping this quite light So that's my goal. I'll do a couple splashes here. And then it gets a little lighter, so I'll just use a damp brush. I'll usually take a tissue or a paper towel or a sponge and take a little bit of water after I rinse my brush off, take a little water off the brush, and then just use a damp brush to kind of lighten this up over here a little bit. The petals are a little bit lighter there, and there's also a little bit of green in the petals, so we'll put a little bit of green in there. Also up here there's a touch of green, so I'll sort of try to capture what I'm seeing. Um, over here it's pretty light as well. Uh, what else do we have? We'll start getting in some some of our leaf forms. I'm trying to mix uh, these colors a little bit here to give it a little more interest, the green and the gold. And maybe a little bit of gold in this too here. Maybe a little bit of raw umber in there. Maybe there's a little bit of um, cobalt blue, cerulean blue for some shadow under there, like that, on some of these. French ultramarine maybe even too, a little bit of shadow there, a little bit of purple. Into the green, I'll go straight into the green there. And there's a little bit of a lighter here. There's some light. And 
and let's do this here. Let's get some of this stems. I will leave some white paper in here. Camium lemon yellow and some green, sap green, a little bit of yellow ochre. Try to change up these uh, leaf, some leaf forms here. I'm trying to Okay, so we are Think going along pretty nicely here. And I'm trying to capture the essence of these leaf, or these petals. They do have some green and they have some veins in there. Um, but I'm not going to get too much uh, with super, de you know, not an incredible amount of detail. I'm going to try to keep it somewhat kind of light and not too much detail. And then sometimes if you're painting in an area and you think it's going to sort of start leaking out into other areas and bleeding out into other areas, you can always 
touch a bit of a tissue to blot up some of that problem and then just let it dry and move to another section. A lot of times that does help quite a bit if we can just kind of remember to move to a different area of, um, of the painting and work at another location until this area dries a little bit and then we can go back in and work there. So usually with watercolors it is one of the things you'll kind of pick up as you go and uh, maybe many of you already know this. Um, you know, sometimes when you're painting in kind of a generalized area and you don't really have a larger sheet of paper where you can work in other areas, you'll tend to start in your main area and work and then you can always um, work in one area and then wait till another area dries and then you can move back over to another area and kind of finish up some things and then come back over here again and so you can kind of work around your painting that t tends to be pretty helpful when painting in watercolor because it's sort of uh it tends to um help a lot if you can kind of move around have the idea of being willing to move around your painting a little bit when you start to see some things that are too wet to be working like let's say you want to work on some of these petals over here but you notice that it's too wet and they're starting to like all mesh and mingle together too much and you you can just uh, take a break from that area and then work in another section of your painting and then you come back that's all pretty straightforward okay so we are I'll let some of this dry up top here and I'll start working on this stem here and I notice it's a little bit lighter the stem here and I just hold my hand on the paper, I rest my hand on the paper and then I just take the brush, hold it down, and I just slide my hand down and uh, incidentally my working table is a lot larger than my sh sheet of paper or my pad so I, I think it's really will help a lot if you are working with a uh, watercolor and you're kind of working a lot in with my techniques and methods it's always good if you can have a larger um, work table where you can rest your hand and then actually have it where you can slide your hand off the paper and still be on top of a board or a table so that you know you can take your brush and do that take it and you can make a nice straight line by just sliding your hand straight down like that that does help a lot get a little bit of uh, some shadow over here and then we'll do uh, well, let's keep going over here since we're over here a little bit of a darker green here with some raw umber too so this over here is sort of in shadow like that then this is over in the light and that's where I usually occasionally you'll see me I'd like to leave a little bit of um white paper between two areas like a line of white paper so you can leave a just a little bit of white paper dry paper right in between two areas you're painting and then once it dries a little bit maybe two three four minutes later then you can kind of just you know kind of smooth that area in and that that keeps the let's say the darker paint over here from flooding into this area here So that's kind of the idea behind that. And then over here.
All right, so we are kind of winding down now. I think we have a lot of this. I'm just going to try to get a couple of those fine stem stems in. And then maybe we'll, uh, I think we wanted to maybe get a few of these a little more. Now we go back in over here when this is drier. And then we can get that one petal in there that looks a little different. And I added a little bit of a darker tonal value there just to kind of break it up a little bit. And then maybe over here too I can I can do a little bit of a darker tonal value there rinse off the brush and then use a drier brush and just smooth that out a little bit there And we can also add in a little bit of more. Sometimes you can add in a little more color than you think you're seeing to make the, maybe the painting a little more exciting. So maybe I'll add in some more of the purple. Then I'll dry off my brush and kind of fade that in like that just to All right, and then we can also capture that uh, little bit of details. I would take a little bit of burnt umber and um, ultramarine violet, purple, and a touch of uh, sap green. Then I would dry off my brush on a dry tissue or paper towel. And then I might uh, just get a few of these small details like that. Like that, there's a few there, there's a few over here. I would absolutely wait till the uh, end of the painting and you can erase that W in there between the the leaf forms and the petal, petals of the flowers and the leaf forms there. I would erase that dub, a W. I just put it there so that I definitely knew not to paint over that because sometimes that can happen. Um, painting over an area you almost you want it to keep a little bit of white paper in a, in a spot or two and then it, all of a sudden uh, it happens that uh, we paint over things like that. So that kind of avoids that, helps to keep those uh, few things you want to keep uh, some white paper there and uh, that should be good. And I think this looks pretty good. So I think this, yeah, I think this is almost, yeah, this is kind of finished. I think I wanted to keep these petals like really light like these are. I didn't want to go with too much heavy paint. And I think the greens look okay with the golds, you know, going through and the stem and the leaf forms. This might be uh, 
we wanted to remember to paint this now in here just to kind of put that fuse that together there and then there's maybe a little bit of a darker couple of things there a couple of like darker spots there but that looks pretty good that wouldn't go too much more sometimes underdoing a painting might look a little better than trying to keep working on it and adding a few things here and there and next thing you know we've added too much um i i would think i should add maybe another leaf form i'm going to try to do that and i'll draw i'll draw it in first too but i'm thinking it might look good to maybe have just like one maybe one leaf form here And then maybe I can add just a little bit more color there, just to add a few little bits of darks. I think that sometimes looks good if we can get those few darker darks, just a couple spots of really, really dark um, paint. Sometimes will really look good just to get a couple, or even you know, some. Make sure I add some cerulean blue here and there since I added some down here. Uh, yeah, I think that looks better balance wise, having a few extra little bit of um, exciting dark, darker tonal values here just to kind of amp it up a little bit, notch it up a little bit. And I think that's fine. So um, it's great to paint and draw with you. We'll be back soon before you know it. Painting and drawing again in watercolor, some of my favorite things to do are flowers. Um, and when we practice flowers like this, this we can eventually parlay into really gorgeous uh, bouquets of flowers with still life. Maybe you'll have some fruit, some vegetables, maybe some mugs, teacups, things like that, as well, as well with a beautiful bouquet of flowers and a vase in a larger style painting. So when we do these type of paintings, we're thinking of perhaps uh, in the future, in the very near future, we're going to build a larger painting. So we're kind of working on maybe smaller parts of a larger whole eventually. So we're going to do more um, larger uh, sized paintings with more um, subject matter in there. So this might be part of the bouquet of flowers. Maybe we can have two or three of these clusters of um, flowers in a bouquet in a vase. And, um, and then we can work from there, get a vase, and then maybe a couple, an apple, an orange, a tomato, some interesting still life um, subject matter, and we can build a, a larger painting and have a great time of it. We'll build more colors into the painting. Right now we're just kind of working with some more kind of you know, three or four different colors, purples and uh, pink with the lizard and crimson, and then some greens and golds, and that essentially is uh, a little bit of blue, and we have it. So uh, great, again, to work with everyone. We'll see you on the next painting. I always mention if you like to um, follow along with me on my channel here with all of us, uh, you can subscribe on the right-hand side below. You just click the subscribe button, and all that does is it just alerts you the next time we've created a video so you can follow along and keep um, in close contact with us as we're working together. And we're doing all kinds of paintings. We do flowers, we do landscapes, we do beautiful seascapes and beach scenes and boat scenes. We do portrait and uh, figure painting. We do city scenes. We basically do everything uh, in watercolor, drawing and painting in watercolor here on this channel. So I'm always um, encouraging everyone to subscribe on the uh, right-hand side below. Stay in contact with us. Keep working along with us. Your watercolors are guaranteed to get better uh, as you keep just doing the fundamentals each time we get together. And that's basically what I'm always 
kind of focused on on my channel is kind of doing the same fundamental things over and over again while we are doing different subject matter and doing different changing things all of the time with what we're actually doing what we're creating but we still always keep in mind the most fundamental things that we're working with so that we can actually um just make that part of like what we always do when we're working with our our art and our paintings so again thanks for watching we'll see you soon